Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I have to tackle the situation with the Drez Oasis and the fact that it completely lacked water in the previous episode. Now I've come back here and we seem to be gaining water, I think. I don't know. Still says zero there. But that 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 is increasing the time we have left. Not much time, that's a minute and 34 seconds. So, or, well, it's yellow, so maybe that's the, I think that might be the amount of time they're lacking water is probably what's going on there, actually. Uh, that probably should be negative. But then this is negative. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, uh, my assumption is that they need water in order to survive. And we have some resources in order to get them water. Uh, we have the... Well, the Dred CRT can't help, but the Rocky 3. Let's jump to that and check that as water drills. And I don't know if we've scanned the surface of Dres yet. We've got a scanner pro there. So we've got two water and mineral drills, so that's good. And these are these are water tanks. So it can carry quite well, the, these are. Whoop. Not those. The ones in the middle. The ones in the middle are water tanks. Okay, good. Uh, so this is pretty pretty well off and it's got lots of Delta V 2785 so yeah it's ready I was worried that this might need to be refilled at the Oasis first but it doesn't look like it it looks like it has enough Delta V right now to head on and do landing procedures let's take a look at the scanner pro and see well maybe we don't have to look at the scanner pro let's see um, big map let's see if we can get the okay altimetry map of Drez it says and we do have Rocky 3 here, so it is Drez. Resources, I want to see water. We did find water, right? I, I remember this being ironic and everything. There was no water on Duna, but there was water on Drez. Something else that makes me want to restart the series. Uh, I hope uh, there is water on Duna in 1.0.5 or something. Okay. Initially, I was going to wait until 1.1, but there's like no news about when that's going to be released, so... Uh, I'm going to try and not hold my breath on it. In fact, I've even started looking at the 64-bit workaround, and how stable that is, and whether that's a good idea or not. Taking a look at uh, Rocky 3's orbit, we're pretty equatorial. We've only got a 7-degree inclination, so I guess it'd have to be this spot. Right around here. So um, it says, well, basically zero. Let's call it zero degrees in uh, latitude, in about eleven degrees east, or I guess the midpoint will be about eight degrees east. There's none here, so we don't want to overshoot. Definitely not more than 14 degrees east, nor less than zero. So let's call it seven. All right, uh, I'm going to have Mechjeb put down a marker. So I'm going to enter target coordinates. Um, zero, 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 and seven degrees east. Midlands. Is that right? Actually, she doesn't say. All right. So we should have a little marker on our our map here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's on the dark side. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we need to pick somewhere else. That would have been a nice spot, but maybe there's uh, something further south. We could divert to... that's 30 degrees. We have to change our inclination by 20 degrees to reach something like there. I don't know, what's the what's the rotational period of Drez? Let me look that up. Uh, looks like just about a day. Uh, one day, three hours, 40 minutes for the rotational period. And I think that's a carbon measured day, so a six hour day. Okay, maybe we'll just land in on the uh, spot in the nighttime side and then wait for daylight. 
Makes me feel a little bit better than changing inclination like this. With our Delta V, if we really need to land somewhere else, maybe we can still divert to somewhere else. Now we have a day and 19 hours to to the BOP probe, so I would like to get all this done by then. Oh, I do have to remember, the reason why it has all this Delta V is because it's got to be heavier with the water. So, must not forget that. Maybe we won't be able to fill up all of the water tanks. Uh, uh, yeah, well, we, let's just focus on filling one of them up. That should be enough for the Kerbals for now. Oh, looks like we're too far north now. That's fine. Okay, that looks pretty lined up to me. But it looks like we also need some time to burn off this 300 meters per second, so let me get on with it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's wait for the suicide burn countdown to be less than a minute at least. Now, it's got to be some patch, and it's not exactly right here, so it's fine. We're not trying to land right next to something. One thing I wonder about is, I'm running in OpenGL mode, and it makes no difference compared to uh, regular mode. You know, DirectX 9. And I think maybe the reason is Active Texture Manager, which I also use. Maybe the effect of OpenGL mode isn't so great when you're using ATM. Especially when it's ATM aggressive. Not sure though. This doesn't look like the flattest terrain ever. Okay. We have landed. Okay. Well, let's begin drilling operations, and uh, we'll have to cut it if the electric charge gets too low. Deploy drill. Start water drill. Okay, water rate. Okay, we've got water. We've also got electric charge depletion. Okay, well, let's wait till the daylight side. Stop water drill. I don't know how long the Kerbals can go without water, actually. Okay. Stable water... Input. And no longer stable. Okay. Stop this drill. Sun setting. It has been a Dres day. Hmm. How many units would we need? Probably not that many. It's getting pretty critical over there. It's in the red. Um. I don't know. Should I go for an extra day? Seems like a bad idea, huh? But then again, we're wasting a lot of resources landing and getting so little water. Let's bring this load of 500 water to them. How much water are they supposed to... Uh, I'll jump to them and see how much water they're supposed to have. Okay, here we are again with our our dehydrated crew. Looks like it can carry 18,616, but that's probably more than it strictly needs for life support. That's because it is the Dres Oasis. So yeah, let's try and carry up what we can. Uh... Uh, we don't have any water. What the heck? Wait a minute. Now, the game did crash, by the way, the last time I tried to go to the Dres Oasis. Okay, 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 okay. So, it seems like uh, I didn't do the drilling yet. We're, we're only two hours. Actually, Dres Oasis says it has two hours remaining. It's ticking down now. I'm so confused. Okay, uh, alright. Fine, fine. I don't know how it got that water, but all right. Let's just uh, let's just start drilling. Okay. We better get going then. Stop water drill. Five hours only though. Could we maybe go another day? 
Um, I think this might be a rare case where I quick save. I don't know, I mean, if we bring it up now, we might not have enough fuel to come back down, right? We need some spare, I mean, we have enough to come back down, but we might not be able to come back up with a full load of water or anything like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm gonna F5. Come on, you can do it. Alright, quick saving. And I'm gonna go another day. And hope that Kerbals don't die. Okay, I think that's good enough. 1,300 units. We'll take that. They've been without water for 14 hours. Unfortunately, the Dres Oasis is a bit... Well, it might be... Well, it'll be easy to rendezvous with it anyway. As it says, target. Okay, good. I was afraid it was going to switch to it or something. Okay, we are... We are here. Yeah, I hope to meet up with it right at Periapsis there. And it'll probably take us a few rounds until that actually comes in. It's going to take 2 hours and 20 minutes for that to get to Periapsis. So we would want some sort of orbit that's a multiple of that. Okay. That is the plan. The relative inclination is 21 degrees. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit far off there. Okay. Let's get going. Trouble is, we're gonna have to do quite a burn to, um, you know, match that orbit. Yeah. We gonna have to use a lot of delta V. We might not be able to refuel again. I don't know. How much food, water, and oxygen does the Dres CRT have? It's got one crew, 466 days. I think we can put two more crew in there and bring them back home. That'll alleviate some of the stress on the Dres Oasis. If it turns out that uh, resources are too tight. Oh, that's good. We can meet it over there. Totally different plan than I originally had, but that's alright. I'd rather not change the inclination down here after all. I still don't know. It can't be that the water was all converted to liquid fuel and oxidizer, because the Dres Oasis doesn't have much liquid fuel and oxidizer. Did it just evaporate or something? What the heck? It had a whole load of water. Okay, 1.2 kilometers. Okay, let's get over there. Hopefully we won't have too much difference to adjust for. They've been without water for 15 hours now. It'll be about 17 hours by the time we actually get to them. Okay, well, there it is. Currently 9 kilometers away. Looks like 160 meters per second we have to adjust for. Okay, towards target. Uh, I guess we should use the RCS since, uh, well, we have 240 units of mop propellant for heaven's sakes. We might as well. Opening shield on the Dres Oasis. I don't think it's a good idea to try and get the, the refueler to be docking on either of those ports. Anyway, let's control from here and point at the Rocky 3. Oh, there it is. But we will turn Smart ASS off before switching back to the Rocky 3, of course. Uh, I think there must be something on board that's creating water here. Something is taking wastewater, maybe? This is possible. 
Okay, we are a minute out, closing to within 200 meters. We haven't selected the docking port. Okay, looking good, very much lined up. Smart ASS off. It was turned off on the Dres Oasis as well. Gotta take advantage of the fact that magnetism is strong without realism overhaul. And there we go. Alright, so now how many days worth of water do we have here? Mm, maybe we should send the Dres stuff over well, I mean the Duna stuff over here. Water, 339 days, so that's all in line. So now we've got 300 days. But we're really short on fuel. Yeah. Anyway, let me transfer the water over. Now we also have to hope that the water doesn't suddenly disappear on us. Now I've stopped any processing in the lab. Uh, or whatever they call it, the refinery. So here, fuel refinery, everything is off. Now that was what was consuming water and it was supposed to produce liquid fuel and oxidizer but it sure didn't produce much of it. That's another flaw in all of this. We're, we've got a lot of waste here. Uh, the reclamation units are up here, that's where they are. Water splitter, not active, obviously we don't want to split the water. Uh, carbon extractor is active and that's fine. The water purifier is what's been running and so it's got to take the wastewater and purify it. Problem is that I think once it purifies the wastewater it produces waste and we don't have much space for that. Now it's supposed to be dumped off board if we don't have space but the question is whether that's working right. So that's that's Dres Oasis for you. Okay well at least we we rescued them. The Kerbals seem alright. They have their water and it looks like for a decent amount of time but we'll certainly have to pay attention to them again soon because it's got to take some time to get the next mission over here and mainly we need to transfer liquid fuel and oxidizer over here ahead of time so that we can drill for more water um... it doesn't seem very efficient does it? I, I don't think we can carry enough water up to fill this up fill the Rocky 3 up to do a full round? I don't know. I'll have to do the math on that. Seems like seems like we might not be an efficient system here. Okay, but anyway, mission accomplished. We can now turn back to our jewel matters with the bot probe. Ah, so the bot probe is actually going to have a leaf encounter and then a tylo encounter. It's going to uh, use both of them to get itself into orbit around jewel. So that's the plan. And then it's going to have to figure out how to get the bop encounter after that. Doesn't look uh, After the leaf encounter, I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit in order to make sure that the tylo encounter doesn't hurt our inclination that much. Otherwise, yeah, we'll try and get it more in line with bop. You can see there's a big gap there. And I want tylo to help us out with that gap and not... That's actually causing the gap now, I think. Um, our life encounter is good. We have a periapsis. We don't want to crash into life or go through its atmosphere. That's the main thing. Well, I have to say, this whole thing with Drez makes me question the efficacy of our water fountains and oases. We do have a few of those deployed, and they might not be the best way of doing things, huh? Well, that'll correct the inclination. Cost 370 though. Maybe we should do it at periapsis or something. Oh, I see. Uh, this is actually trying to avoid Tylo? Is that how it's working out? You know, maybe it is not the best place to do it. Let's just pass Lathe and see what happens. Um, maybe I can plot it. Okay, this is way too touchy. Look, uh, 0.01 radial gets us that. Canceling that gets us this. Uh huh. Well, oh, look at that. Well, that looks a lot closer than it actually is. I don't even know if any of this would be consistent. Well, let's try it. We'll make that correction out of Lace Sphere of Influence. Looks like we get another Lace Encounter afterwards, huh? 
That's tricky business. But we've done that before too. Okay, passing my lathe. And this correction is coming up right away. We've got lots of delta V, but we're trying to bring this pro back, right? This got this has parachutes and it has a heat shield and everything. We want to bring this back to Kerbin. Now I see what happens. It's actually after the leaf encounter that we get that pass over there. That's why it's so hard to get it accurate. Okay. So we're passing by Tylo and then we're going to pass by Leith again and then we're going to see how we can manage uh, rendezvous with Bob. The things I do. Sheer time warping might have messed things up but it's pretty complicated to begin with. Okay so now let me try and plot something at Apoapsis to fiddle around with it. Right now we seem to be going on escape and we're actually passing through Leif's atmosphere. It's probably not a good idea. Okay, yeah, well this is not the orbit I signed up for. I guess I could work with that. It's a little bit fidgety as you can see. Uh oh. Emergency habitat launch. How much time do we have for that? Well, at least that's closer to home. Oops, wrong thing. 35 days. Well, yeah, we need to deal with that situation. Actually, looking at it, this, this could be a problem. This is going to take a lot longer to get to BOP than that 35 days. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to land a rescue vehicle out the, well away from the emergency habitat launch and have the Kerbals EVA to it. I think that's the plan. So I don't like having such a long orbit. Let me try and uh, fix that a bit. Oh, the Paul Water Fountain's coming in. Dang it. Um, all right, let me have Mechjeb add a maneuver at. Uh, Well, let's just say change inclination at, well, I don't know about equatorial ascending node, I want that ascending node, which is the ascending node with uh, BOP. Yeah, I don't want that ascending node, but maybe I can, okay, there we go, BOP encounter, phew, okay, still a lot of work. And that's not a great bop encounter. We're going to have a lot of slowing down to do once we hit it. In fact, uh, I was trying to get it fine-tuned, but now I've lost it. Well, it's something like that. Okay. That's in three days, but we'll just have to add that maneuver into the list and deal with the Paul Water Fountain. And this, of course, is entering the jewel system now. It has a leaf encounter, it looks like. Maybe we'll just add the leaf timer and then we can hop back to other things. Let's see how that encounter looks and whether it does what we want it to do. It... well, that's definitely not what I want it to do. Um, it's nice to have a leaf encounter and all, but it's just flinging us back out and into interplanetary space. We're also crashing in a jewel here, so that's not good either. What we really want to do is get closer to Leif in a way that slows us down. Okay, that's safe. Now we don't have to wait until there to do that, hopefully. Let's see. It's just a radio burn. And this is a heavy vehicle? Well, somewhat. It's a drilling unit. It's a drilling unit that can drill for water and carbonite, which is handy. Okay, let's take a good look at what happens. We want it to get here. Yeah, much cheaper from out here, obviously. And looks like it's still not a safe orbit. That 
That is a safe orbit. Let's target Paul. Not the greatest location for the ascending or descending node. Don't know if we can do anything about that here. Okay, well that gets us also closer to Jewel. So we don't want the combination of those two things. That's pretty good. If I could plot something, maybe yeah, let me let me plot something there. Is this something we can do to close that in and get an encounter? Still we'll have a lot of slowing down to do once we get there if we do that though. Oh, it really does not want to give me that encounter. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Every time I get close, it dances away. Okay, there we go. Alright. So, passing by Leif, a safe distance. Passing by Jewel, a safe distance. And then coming around and hitting Paul as planned. Okay, and that's a very minor burn in 13 days. We will add that maneuver, and that's quite a time away. Next is this Paul probe. We will get it into the dual system and get it situated, hopefully... Well, I mean, uh, I guess this is like the Bob probe. It's uh, something to land and do science and bring back, right? We've got a scanner around Paul, I believe, already. Yep, the quad probe pack delivered one to Paul as well, but that's not the job of this particular probe. Oh, cancel that. This uh, this Paul probe is already uh, heading in. The alarm is for a lathe encounter. Looks like the first thing we got to do in the next episode, well, maybe not the first thing. We've got some, some things that we actually have to deal with. We've got alarms for, but somewhere in the middle of that, we need to deal with that emergency habitat launch and get the Kerbals back somehow. We'll have to try multiple different kinds of missions in order to get them back. Uh, we'll have some redundancy or something. Okay, so Leif encounter in order to get into a safe orbit around Jewel in preparation for an encounter with Paul. Passing by Leif. A good distance away. And that got us an automatic orbit around Jewel. There we go. That's one thing Leif is good for. Leif and Tylo. Okay, now. Maybe a burn at periapsis around Jewel can get us... Well, the ascending node is all the way over here, but it's only 2.3 degrees. Yeah, let's see. If we can't do... Uh, burn at periapsis in order to fix this up. Okay, well we have an encounter here and it's gonna cost us 6 meters per second at periapsis and another 76 meters per second at the ascending node. We can do this uh, periapsis burn right away looks like and that maneuver at the ascending node as well. So that's good. Getting close to Jewel here, but not too close. Just above, well actually just above the new atmosphere. Uh, in this version I think the atmosphere is still lower. Okay, correction one has been accomplished. 0, 0.0 meters per second. Let's go on to the next one and see if it works out for us. Alright, inclination correction. Yes, we have a Paul periapsis of 505 kilometers, and continuing on like this does not bring that lower. Okay, so let us add that alarm to our alarm clock, Paul SOI change, and that'll be after the BOP probe. Let me take another look at the BOP probe while I'm here. Okay, so I think we can do its maneuver. Let me just check on the emergency habitat again. 30 days for them. Okay. All right, one day and five hours for this maneuver. I thought it was getting us an 
Well, we've got a Leaf Encounter to deal with. Thought we were going to get a Bop Encounter out of this, were we? Or at least the, the Sending Node should be closer. Yeah, we were really... Wait. Uh, if only we had been at the right inclination, we would have really hit Bop right there. Let's pay close attention to this to make sure A, that our Periapsithron Jewel doesn't get too low, B, that our Periapsithron Leaf doesn't get too low, and C, that maybe we can come up with a Bop Encounter. Up, up. Relative inclination is going up again. Hmm. Not as close as I would have liked, and Bop is pretty darn small, so you can't can't just fudge it. Okay, all right. It's just going round and around here, making another adjustment at uh, this ascending node. I guess I will wait till I'm there. Well, no, maybe I can make Mac Jeb get that maneuver there. No, I just want to change inclination. Uh, create node. It's pretty close this time. Changing inclination here isn't that good an idea, but. But we only need to do a little bit, not all this. Ah, oh, that would be better. Yeah, right there would be nice. That's a nice way to go. Yes, I'm liking that. Hopefully it's not an orbit that's going to have some sort of multiple of Bob's orbit. Okay, we will do that maneuver in three hours. It's a little bit costly, but Bop is a little bit weird. We no longer have a Lathe encounter, probably for the best. I'm never too fond of repeated swing bys around Lathe. You get the feeling that at some point it's going to mess with you. There we go. Uh, we don't even have to do anything. 0, 0.0 meters per second, we get an encounter with Bop after waiting in orbit. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Let's add that to the alarm. And now everything should have encounters, I believe. Uh, the Paul Water Fountain clearly needs to make an adjustment, but we've got everything in line to have an encounter. Jewel Oasis and CRT six days has a maneuver, and the supply mission has a maneuver in six days. Lots of stuff going on around Jewel these days. Okay. So it's busy, 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 and then we also have the the emergency habitat to deal with. And I have to come up with some plan with Drez. I sure didn't expect Drez to be our main colony, colony place, but it's got water and Duna doesn't. So maybe we should send the stuff around currently around Duna over to Drez, as depressing as that sounds. Anyway, so uh, yep, yeah, on this note I'll say... I'm going to wrap up the episode. I'll thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.